What if life was a game of chess, with every move intricately planned by a divine hand? A thought-provoking question, isn't it? Now imagine a seasoned chess player, a grandmaster if you will. He's seen it all, the victories, the losses, the stalemates. He's a master of strategy, a virtuoso of the 64 squares. Yet he's also a skeptic, particularly when it comes to the concept of a divine plan. He believes in control, in the power of his own actions. He's convinced that he's the sole author of his victories and the only one to blame for his defeats. The idea of a divine hand guiding his moves, his life, seems far-fetched, even ludicrous to him. After all, where's the strategy in that? Where's the thrill of the game if every move is predestined? But what if there's more to life than just strategic moves and calculated risks? What if there's a grander scheme, a larger game at play, that goes beyond the chessboard? Now let's sprinkle a bit of humour into our tale. Imagine our chess player, a man of serious countenance, suddenly confronted with the absurdity of life. Picture him trying to outwit fate, only to find himself checkmated by an invisible hand. Can you see the irony? The cosmic jest of it all? It's almost enough to make him smile, if not for his stubborn scepticism. But life, my dear friends, is a game unlike any other. It's a dance, a symphony composed by the divine. It's a journey that's meant to be savoured, not rushed. It's a puzzle to be solved, not a battle to be won. It's an adventure, a treasure hunt, a quest for truth and meaning. And our chess player, though a master of strategy, is just at the beginning of his journey. He's yet to learn the true essence of life. He's yet to discover the wealth of wisdom hidden in the game. He's yet to understand that life, like chess, is not about winning or losing, but about playing the game with integrity, courage and grace. Our chess player, though a master of strategy, was yet to understand the grand design of the game called life. What if the chess player, in all his wisdom, decided to question his purpose? What if he looked beyond the chessboard, beyond his strategic manoeuvres, and pondered the grander design at play? Imagine the chess player embarking on a journey of faith. It's not a journey measured in miles or kilometres, but in revelations and insights. It's a journey that transcends the physical realm, reaching into the spiritual, into the very core of his being. He encounters spiritual seekers along the way, individuals who've also stepped away from their respective chessboards of life. They share their experiences, their doubts, their questions, and their discoveries. They speak of a creator, a grand chess player who guides the pawns, the knights, the bishops, and even the kings and queens of this cosmic game, the chess player listens, absorbs, and ponders. He faces challenges, of course. Questioning one's purpose is never a simple task. It's like trying to map out an uncharted territory, a place where traditional compasses fail, where one must rely on the inner guide. But as he delves deeper, he realizes something profound. He understands that everyone, whether a newborn baby or a wise old sage, is a student in this grand school of life. We are all learning, evolving and growing. We are all playing our parts in this grand game, this divine dance of life. He discovers that wealth is not just about accumulating riches, but about enriching one's spirit. He learns that truth is not just about facts and figures, but about authenticity and integrity. He comes to understand that leadership is not about dominance, but about service. And then he stumbles upon a realization that transforms him. He sees that he is not just a chess player, but also a piece on the board, moved by an invisible hand. He sees a grand design, a divine plan, a cosmic dance choreographed by the creator. The chess player, once confident in his own moves, was now beginning to see the invisible hand guiding his life. He sees that he is not alone, that he is part of something much larger, much grander. And in this realization, he finds his faith, he finds his purpose. He finds his place in the cosmic game of life. How would wealth change the game for our chess player? This question often brings a smile to our faces, doesn't it? We imagine a life of luxury, a dance of indulgence, and a world where the chessboard is made of gold. But let's delve deeper into this scenario. As our chess player's bank account grows, so does his world. He becomes a billionaire, a lion in the financial jungle. His wealth brings him the finest wines, the most sumptuous feasts, and the most luxurious mansions. But remember, he is not just a wealthy man, he is a chess player. This wealth, as grand as it may seem, could easily become a distraction from the game. 
The gleam of gold may blind him to the subtle moves of the bishop, the quiet threat of the knight, the silent power of the queen. He may forget that in chess, as in life, it's not about the material possessions, but the strategy, the foresight, the wisdom. Wealth, he realizes, cannot buy the thrill of a well-played game, the satisfaction of a smart move, the joy of a hard-fought victory. It cannot buy the lessons learned from a crushing defeat, the wisdom gained from a strategic retreat, the pride of a fair game, and most importantly, it cannot buy the truth. The truth that every chess player knows deep down. The truth that there's no game without challenge, no victory without struggle, no growth without change. The truth that every pawn has the potential to become a queen. The truth that even the king, the most powerful piece on the board, has its vulnerabilities. And as he dances to the rhythm of life, he understands that wealth is not the goal, but a tool. A tool that can be used to create, to help to grow. But it's not the size of the tool that matters, it's the skill of the craftsman. Wealth, our chess player realized, was but a pawn in the game of life. And like a true leader, he knew that the true wealth lies not in gold or silver, but in truth, faith and the courage to play the game. What happens when the chess player faces the inevitable checkmate? Death. Just as in the game of chess, where each move is calculated, the chess player in the game of life starts to contemplate his own unavoidable end. Death, that final checkmate, casts a shadow, creating a sense of urgency, a need to understand the purpose of life and the importance of living it with integrity. The chess player understands that life, much like the game, is transient. The pieces on the board, like the wealth accumulated in life, are temporary. They serve a purpose, yet they hold no true power. The real power resides in the player, the one who directs the pieces, the one who makes the choices. This wisdom leads him to a profound realization. To die debt-free is to leave this world without any burdens, without any lingering ties. It's not merely about financial debts, but spiritual ones too. It's about living a life where every action is accounted for, every choice is made with a pure heart, and every interaction is based on truth. He recognizes that his life, like every life, is unique and precious. No two chess games are the same, and no two lives are identical. He sees himself as a lion, leading his pride with strength and courage. His life is not about following the herd, but about creating his own path, leading rather than being led. He learns that life is not about accumulating wealth, but about being truthful, never lying, even when it's convenient. It's about being a leader, standing tall in the face of adversity and showing the world that there's no one quite like him. And so, as he faces the final checkmate, he comes to a profound understanding. The game of life, like chess, is not about winning or losing. It's about the choices made, the integrity maintained and the faith embraced. In the end, the chess player understood that the game was not about winning or losing, but about playing with faith and integrity. What if the game of life never really ends? Imagine for a moment that we are all chess pieces in a grand game, masterfully maneuvered by the ultimate chess player, the creator of all creation. No matter if we are kings or pawns, bishops or knights, our moves are part of a divine plan, a game that extends beyond the earthly plane. As we journey through life, like chess pieces advancing on the board, we're guided by faith. Faith, a compass in the storm, a beacon in the night, giving us the courage to embrace the unknown, to dance with uncertainty. It's the faith in the master player's plan, faith that assures us that every move, every choice, every sacrifice is not in vain. Wealth and truth, two seemingly distinct entities, yet intricately woven into the fabric of this game. Wealth is not merely the accumulation of material possessions. True wealth is a rich spirit, a heart full of compassion, a mind filled with wisdom. And truth? Truth is the cornerstone of our existence the bedrock of our faith. It's the unwavering belief that we are part of something bigger, something divine. And when the final checkmate is made, when our earthly journey comes to an end, do we truly cease to be? Or do we simply transition to a new phase of the game? Just as a chess game doesn't end with the fall of a piece, our existence doesn't cease with our last breath. We may be old or young, wise or naive, leaders or followers, Yet we all have one thing in common. We are unique. Each of us 
is a lion in our own right, roaring with the strength of our faith, our truth, our wealth. Indeed, the game of life is a dance, an intricate ballet where we smile, cry, love and lose. It's a dance where we're all billionaires, rich in experiences and memories, where we strive to never lie, to die debt-free, knowing there's no one quite like us. And so the game continues, with each of us playing our part in the divine plan.